thank you for watching the video version of Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. Because YouTube fucking sucks, we had to edit out all of the licensed music. Because laws, I guess. If you want to hear the full unedited versions, you can go to iTunes and Spotify or ever, wherever you get podcasts and you'll get the whole version with us talking over the songs and yada, yada, yada. Uh, it sucks and life isn't fair, but thank you for watching anyway. Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansour. I'm joined as always by my lovely, wonderful co-host, Alexander Volts. Say hello. Hello. Got you on your toes. Nothing this week. Piece of shit. <laughs> Uh, anyway, this is Every Album Ever, the podcast where we listen to every single album ever in the world, one artist at a time. That's a new artist, new discography's artist, a new artist discography, Jesus Christ, new artist discography, more or less per episode. Kind uh, of old artist. Huh? Kind of old artist. What? Like, uh, we're doing older, older art. Uh, so not forever. Not, not forever. forever. We, we do a couple newbies. You but know? we'll cover a brand new artist uh, for you. Yeah, that's what, that's what you meant yeah, by yeah, Okay, yeah. I get it now. I'm an idiot. Uh, so if you'd like to send us any love, hate, any uh, general comments, suggestions for artists, anything you want, send all that to everyalbumever at gmail.com. Uh, I swear I was supposed to plug another thing and I already forgot. Uh, oh, yeah. If you want to support us, go ahead and uh, subscribe. Leave a review. Five star rating. Fucking whatever. On a... Uh, iTunes, Spotify. Actually, the, the most important thing is that if you do like us, tell someone who might also like us. It's word of mouth is always the most important thing. And if uh, you like us, then maybe do that. But also, no, no worries if you no, don't want to. No pressure. It's, it's all good. You know, as long as you're listening, that's good enough. It's not good enough, but it's also it helps. It's you a know? it's a solid B. It's a yeah. Not an a I'm plus. happy. I'm cool with just a B. <laughs> I got through life on B's. Uh, and also after this episode, be sure to check out the Spotify playlist on Spotify that we've created, uh, for this episode, as well as every other episode in the past, uh, Alex and I have, uh, hand picked all of our favorite songs from that particular artist. So you can, uh, there are, there are links for all of them on every ever.com, or you can follow Alex directly on Spotify at mother puncher Inc. That's mother puncher I N C. Okay. And oh. I've also like. All the the podcasts are sorry. The playlists are labeled every album ever. So hopefully that comes up if you search us in Spotify. God willing. Okay, so we got all the bullshit out of the way. We're gonna jump into this because today, if you couldn't tell by the fucking banana behind us, <laughs> we're covering uh, the, the Velvet Underground. Yes, and. Uh, I don't want to jump into anything too quickly, but I'm going to start by uh, by not not necessarily quoting. It's more of a, a general sentiment of a, of a one of my favorite musicians of all time, a man of Mister uh, the name of Mister Frank Zappa, and say and to say that uh, this band sucks. Whoa! I fucking hate Whoa. this band. Oh, well, this this is going to be a spicy spicy. You're episode. for some spice because uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this was rough. and how you were I keep peeking in my own ear because I'm yelling how you felt about Simon and Garfunkel this is me yeah. tenfold here we go episode eight Simon and Garfunkel we get into it uh this man getting through these albums was a uh, was rough for me but really picking my my worst was hard was it it's, a, I, it's it a can really take, I can pick any fucking one of them really it's a no-brainer I had to put a, put aside a lot of biases okay. of mine and it, it, it kind of gave me this, uh, this insight. Uh, I, I literally had to ask myself, how much do I care about my integrity on this podcast? <laughs> because like, I want to give worst album to all of them pretty much. And, but I thought, what is actually bad? What am I just being an asshole about? Yeah. And I really had to put that aside and think about, uh, not just what this band is objectively good at. But why they appeal to so many people, why so many people love them, what the fuck is happening when people revere this band? And I got, I have to, I'm not going to lie to myself and say that I, uh, I really understand, but I will grasp at straws. <laughs> I think you should have just gone full blown hatred out the gate. You, like I you will not be disappointed. I didn't <laughs> say I was going to let it. Dude, no. I know how I feel about this band. I'm not going to oh, sure, sure. pretend that, that that doesn't exist, but I will... Uh, take note of where I feel like actual fans may have 
had some uh, problems. Rather sure. than me, which is a, a problem is a beginning to end. Beginning to end. Yeah. Um, like every artist, I feel like I've discovered new things about myself. Mm. When uh, listening to this, I like them, obviously. But uh, much like our Jimi Hendrix episode, not as much as I thought I did. Episode 16. That was like the last episode. No, 15. Episode 15. They, they all uh, whatever. Good. Yeah. Uh, really? So you were, what, you're, in your youth, you were a bigger fan? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I think this is a very, like, uh, conflicting band where they're being pulled in different directions. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows what they want. In Velvet Underground, um, and yeah, we'll we'll get into that in the epi- in the each album and right. all that, and you know where we think they did wrong and where I think they did good. Okay, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, you know right off the bat, I'm a I'm a John Cale guy. I think I don't. Uh, what is what is what do those words mean? John Cale is the uh, multi instrumentalist on the first two albums. So you do the bass, the organ, the viola, all that stuff. Mm, um, mm, so he's to blame. Okay. Uh, also, how how <laughs> fitting is that? How fitting is it that his last name is Kale and how fucking bougie this band is? <laughs> yeah, I think I think Lou reads the bougie one. Uh, so Velvet Underground, they have five albums total. First album was released in 1967. The last one in 1973. Uh, mm, my personal history with them, uh, bits and pieces throughout my whole life. And, uh, um, by bits and pieces, I just mean the famous songs essentially. Sure. Uh, because they get played to fucking death. Uh, much like any band, I guess, any revered band. from yeah. this era, especially. And I do as much as I, I fucking hate this band because I didn't go into this hating them. I went into this. <laughs> With low expectations because sure. I know what they're about and I'm not a fan of what they're about. Uh, just their whole style, their mm-hmm. entire musical style. I'm not into that. So I went in low expectations and then they, they dropped them lower, dropped them lower. However, I, I like Lou Reed's solo stuff, which is Weird. why I'm confused because Weird. I think he's, he's got some shit to offer. I think he's a real good writer of words, not music. Well, he does have a uh, degree in English. If Fuck him. If Anybody could, can get a degree in English. If you couldn't tell. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> that used to be my major, and then I switched it because I hate uh, like literature. Anyone, anyone can do it. <laughs> no. Although, yes, if I could do it, anybody can do it. But uh, I don't know. I, li- I like like a few of his solo albums. Uh, maybe like three. I, never, I, didn't, I didn't do a deep dive in, into his stuff either. I was uh, going to save this for the end, but I guess I'll bring it up now. Part of me wants to do a Lou Reed episode so we can talk about Lulu, his album with Metallica. Oh. But then part of me, I will I will stab someone if I have to listen to heavy metal or uh, shit. What's that called? Metal Machine Music. Oh, I have to listen to that fucking album. If you if for anybody who doesn't know Metal Machine, Metal Machine Music, it is um, you. Anybody who says it's like a, a noisy experiment, experimental record is an asshole because he did not. It's uh, an entire album of noise, but it was meant as like a, a fuck you to the record company. It's not like an sure. experimental thing. Yeah. It was purposely shitty. <laughs> so fuck that album. Um, <laughs> it's uh, one of the few albums I would call unlistenable. Yeah. That's pretty. I didn't even, I'm not, I probably heard like a little bit. Like, no, I didn't. I didn't yeah, yeah, you, you heard the whole record then if you heard 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, so I guess let's uh, jump into it. Uh, okay. This is first album. This is that one. Behind us. Also, before we jump into anything, uh, for video watchers, uh, cr- groundbreaking moment. All right, we're trying to get our, our fucking shit together. If you see, it looks maybe the same as the last episode, but slightly better. I got a microphone windscreen oh, on yes. my microphone, thanks to good old Alex here. I'm no longer using his Adidas sock. The Adidas sock can now go on my foot. <laughs> How many ep- we did? 16 episodes without Adidas sock. R.I.P. On my Adidas. mouth, essentially. <laughs> R.I.P. Adidas sock. Okay, but we're, we're, getting, we're getting there. Okay, so first up, 1967, The Velvet Underground and Nico. I didn't like that, surprisingly. It's so prissy. It, that opening, it's like a, it would be in an ironic scene of someone killing someone else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, it probably has been if it's not. Uh, yeah, the album ranges from like pleasant to noisy. I will say it gets more insane each track. 
I feel like. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 insane's a very generous term. <laughs> I think it's There's nothing insane about this horse shit. I think it's pretty <laughs> I think it's pretty fucking insane. Okay, okay. Um or like yeah, Sunday morning, it's like it sounds so pleasant, but it's a song about like paranoia. Okay. So that's that's interesting. One thing I will give them Also real quick, oh, can I do best personal favorite? This, this your one. best personal favorite? This one. Not surprising in the least to me. <laughs> and even then, even then, <laughs> fuck this album. It's not my worst or least favorite, but I still think it's shit. And, and okay, shit is, is still being an asshole about it. Uh, and I, I one thing I will give them credit for is their lyrics, which we all know I don't like lyrics. Well, it's not that I don't like them. I just, I'm lazy. I don't care. I, I, if I can't blatantly hear them, I'm not going to go reading it because I like music more. Uh, for this band, I felt like I needed to, uh, just to, sure. and I didn't, you know, I didn't go track by track, read all the lyrics, but the bits that I did read, I'm like, okay, they, they clearly have some, you know, some English chops. Mm-hmm. It's nice imagery. It's interesting. Interesting topics. A little, 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 uh, I don't know. Little, 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 but but still, it's like good writing. Uh, well, I, I guess at the time it was groundbreaking because there weren't a lot of bands talking about like drugs and mm. sex and S and M and prostitution and all this all this fun. If uh, only the music wasn't garbage. Sorry, go on. <laughs> I love I love me some Venus and Furs. Okay, all right. So Venus and Furs is solid. It is the only song in the album that I really like. It's the only Velvet Underground song I kind of actually really like, and. Uh, it's one of those ones that I heard a billion times growing up. So when you hear that as a, a kind of your introduction, like, oh, this is band is probably pretty cool. And then that's the only song that doesn't sound like major key, happy, poppy, annoying shit on the entire album. Oh, I disagree. How? How? Heroin. Okay. So it's funny you say heroin because <laughs> the, every song on this fucking album sounds like heroin. It's sloppy and slow and, yeah. and, and it's messy and... Heroin, I'm like lyrically, I'm pretty sure it's fine, <laughs> uh, but boring, boring. This album is so boring to me. So if heroin doesn't do it for you, okay. Black Angels Death Song, and the last two tracks, yes. inexcusable dicking around nonsense. Oh, fucking, I, I hate it. I hate it. I lo- <laughs> I, I I love Black Angels Death Song. Uh, European, I think European Sun is fun. It's this uh, uh, <sighs> dive into insanity to me. Are you uh, you ever heard of this uh, thing uh, Lou Reed invented called ostrich tuning? Yeah, that's where every every string is tuned the same, right? Every uh, yep. e, e, e across the board. Yep. Um, I know uh, Soundgarden used that on Mind Riot. Okay. I, that's the only reason why I know it because I like Soundgarden a lot more than I like Lou Reed. There you go. Uh, I didn't know he invented that. He did invent. I that. mean, technically. It's not the most brain busting thing to say. How about they're all the same note, but it's a pain in the ass to do that. Sure. Like, cause, uh, cer- certain strings are not meant to go that high or low. Mm-hmm. So it sounds wonky. You gotta kind of get to get creative. Um, interesting tuning. Uh, yeah. The album, only album Andy Warhol produced, but it's like in name only. Mm. They said there was other people like, uh, Tom Wilson. So I, who did work with Zappa. So I think that's funny that Zappa hated them because this Tom Wilson guy also worked with uh, SNG, Simon and Garfunkel. Oh, interesting. And Sun Ra, So real interesting. Oh, Sun Ra. Yeah. Man, I haven't heard that name in a while. Real interesting producer. But yeah, lots of drone distortion, detuning. Uh, except for when the songs suck. So it's all so most of it. And I, this is just the band in general. It's so, so, so mellow. That it's borderline music to me, especially fucking Femme Fatale, which I hate, hate that song. See, I think Femme Fatale is, it's like slow, but I don't know. These songs are way, way more interesting than anything else they've ever done. If this is interesting, then fucking kill me now, because (laughs) this is so boring to me. Uh, I think uh, my least favorite on the whole album is Run and Run. Right. Yeah, it's just kind of. Okay, Run 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 is so bad that following it is Ultimate's Party, which is like everyone loves that song. It's a very famous song. Yeah, there's a festival named after it. There's literally a festival named after it. That song's uh, got the ostrich. Okay, on it. so Ultimate's Party Parties comes on after that. And when I was first listening to this, I thought like, okay, this song isn't too bad. 
It's okay. It's just long. And then I listened to the album again. And I thought, no, I was wrong. This only this song only seems good because it comes right after Run 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 because that song is so bad <laughs> that any hot garbage. I hate All Tomorrow's Party. I fucking hate that song, <laughs> dude. Oh my god, uh, the fucking backup vocals and there she goes again make me laugh so. Yeah, it's, it's they, no one, no one in this band is a singer. No one. No one in this band is a musician. Like I disagree. I love I love John Cale. That dude fucking sucks. I love him. And, and I love him, especially the drums. I the drumming on this album and the next one, uh, so abysmal. Well, I don't think anyone would call Mo a good drummer. Yeah. Uh, well, people do, and it's Dude. mostly because of like, oh, she was influential because she had short hair or some bullshit like that. Even though everybody hates her now for being uh, like, like super conservative. I think is she? Whoa. Uh, yeah, but she sucks. She sucks real bad. And I think I saw a quote from a. Uh, Jimmy Carl Black from Mother's Invention, Frank Zappa's band. Yeah. And he was giving them a lot of credit. Like, he's like, yeah, I know Zappa hated them a lot. I don't know if he's, this quote is even accurate or not. But he was like, yeah, I thought I thought Mo especially was a good, really good drummer. She was only female around. I was like, being a female doesn't make you a good drummer. It makes you a female. <laughs> don't confuse it. She sucks. Like, objectively, awful drummer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, nothing uh, <laughs> groundbreaking about her drums. No. No. And it, oh, man, I don't even know how. Like this one, I I was trying to think because I know this is beloved, and I was trying to figure out why it could be from someone who, from a different planet, someone who's never, sure. heard, someone who wasn't forced to not forced, but someone who wasn't exposed to all these songs growing up. Like I'm waiting for the man, bad song, two chords for six fucking hours, but it's comfortable. Like uh, I've heard it so many times that even when I, when it came on, I'm like, Oh, this song, it's not too bad. But yeah. then I realized like, no, this is boring. I just heard it so many times. That it's like fucking Stockholm syndrome. I think this album uh, does a good job of balancing out those songs with the crazy songs for me to make it interesting. I felt, I felt like it only got crazy in the, at the, uh, the last two tracks. Towards the end. Yeah. Not a, uh, well, not a fan of heroin, obviously. It, it's just boring to me. Like I'm sure if, yeah, I, if I, I got really into the writing and the lyrics, I would mm -hmm. I would enjoy it more. But musically, uh, uh, yeah. It, yeah, like I said, I think uh, John Cale with the viola makes makes the album what uh, it is. Oh man, it sounds. I don't know. Like this this thing, this album especially, it, it encapsulates a very specific time period and a very specific group of people. Neither sure. of which I care for. Sure. Like, this whole bohemian, overly artsy Andy Warhol, like this asshole has his own name on the album cover instead of the band's name. Well, yeah, because he was, it's so weird. He just like got a wild hair up his ass about the Velvet Underground. Dude, fuck that guy. And said, you're going to be stars. Uh, and they weren't. It, they're, yeah, one of those bands until like they didn't get recognition until years later. I think they should have never gotten recognition. <laughs> I don't, I just, it's, a, it's, you know, Drum circles. That's what I what I what I envision when I when I listen to this band. Fucking drum circles, annoying people who really who wear fancy like not fancy but like uh, wild makeup and crazy hair and stupid clothing just for the sake of it, and then talk about uh, I don't know politics from a from a <laughs> a really bougie point of view. I don't know. Like fuck these people. Like I have no interest in these types of people in real life. Sure, so having to hear it and knowing exactly what they are. Also, uh. also, I should have looked into it, like, because he sings about heroin a lot, not just on the song heroin. Yeah, they're all fucking junkies. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're probably miserable people to be around. Probably. Well, uh, I know that's probably one of the reasons Zappa hated them so much, because he was, you know, staunch. Yeah, yeah. It was before Straight Edge was a thing, but he was a no drugs, no, uh, no booze kind of guy. Uh, and they were the polar opposite. And also, man... Everything about his band, this is not comparing the two, but like, uh, I mean, it is, but it's not in like, from not actually comparing them to musically, but like he, his whole band is just full of virtuosos, like nine virtuosos. Sure. And this is like nine people who've never played a fucking instrument in their lives. It's like the polar opposite of everything yeah, I enjoy the, about music. They're just grinding it out. And uh, I think it works for this album. Uh, this is not my worst, but I will <laughs> never listen to this again. And I, I actually, this is Velvet Underground. Aside from me believing that they are by far one of the most overrated bands in history, uh, I I came to that realization kind of like almost like I was in denial because I went back like I was in college and I thought, you know what? I never gave them a shot. I'm going to give them a shot. 
and I put on this album and I didn't finish it. Like it wasn't wow. like a, it wasn't like a hating it kind of thing. I didn't I didn't hate it, but I like I don't I don't see it. I don't see it and I don't I don't feel like listening to this. So for this one, I was like, no, I gotta listen to it at least two times, two whole times. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. And I don't get why they're they're considered so fucking great. I, I just it's weird, even though I like the, I do agree with the like overrated aspect of it, uh, which I guess you could say about any any band that's you know thrown in yeah any bit yeah any on, on a pedestal yeah yeah, yeah. Any and band like that that makes it on too many uh to too many uh greatest bands List. ever list yeah 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 so uh yeah it was like some of the first lps i bought was uh that bad boy really so, listen to it a lot uh, interesting i i do believe you are a victim of the stockholm syndrome as well alex i might be I it might sucks be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, man. I'm gonna. I'll take all the hate for this because it's. it's no, fun. Yeah, I, I I like genuinely like this album, mm. and like, I guess it's kind of spoilers. Like, I don't think you know some of the other ones. Okay, I would, I would revisit. So let's uh, move on before I get more heated. Ugh. Excuse me. All the heat. All the. You could say the the white light, white heat. 1968. So this is my least favorite. Um, this this album, where where I was saying earlier about the last album kind of encapsulating an entire scene and image and a type of person and musician, this album encapsulates everything I hate about that. Uh, was, or at least everything that they do that rubs me the wrong way. It was, it's funny because they were like frustrated about their lack of success. So they fired... Andy Warhol, and then because Nico's <laughs> only there because of Warhols. Who the fuck is Nico? I don't even. I still don't know. She's a, you know she's a singer. She did some solo albums and really yeah. So, uh, but she was only there because of Warhol, mm -hmm. and then, so they kicked her out. Okay, um, but yeah, it's this kind of funny that they were like frustrated about not being successful, and then I think in some ways this album is more like like abrasive than yeah. the first one for sure for sure how many songs like uh six? there's not that many i think there's six or something like S sister ray boy oh boy <sighs> there is nothing not a lick about that song that's commercial there it's is nothing redeemable about that garbage i want to murder whoever idea it was 17 minutes seven, of it, repetitive talentless jamming it's the uh, art rock version of Freebird. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, no, it sounds even less musically proficient than the last <laughs> album. It goes on for a fucking lifetime. The words dumb as fuck. I hate the fucking lyrics. It's, it's a real confusing song. Cause there's eight characters in there and it's like a drag queen orgy and there's like heroin going on. It, it's written like shit though. That's why I hate yeah. it. Like you can have any kind of interesting topic, but if it's written like ass, who gives a shit? It sucks. I, I mean, I, I think it sucks. <laughs> uh, and like the whole thing beginning to end, I say far less musical than the first album somehow. Cause I didn't think the first one was musical at all. I thought the first one was like fucking elevated music to me. And this one, even, even more so, uh, the gift. Oh man, the gift. I, man, I feel like I have a love hate relationship with that song. Cause Explain. like, Explain. I appreciate the story. Right. It's like a real clever idea for a song. The guy can't afford to see his girlfriend. So he mails himself to her. Right. Can't get the box open. And then uh, her friend ends up like unintentionally like stabbing him in the head while yeah. trying to open the box. Yeah. I think that's like. It's, it, no, it's a, it's a fine story. But it's just so annoying the way it's delivered as like I mean, as an eight minute bullshit spoken yeah. word spoken over, word yeah yeah so. eight minutes of fucking rock and roll uh not even good or well performed rock and roll and the thing about the, the story like it's fine uh but i'm not good at calling twists in movies or stories yeah. and even i called that twist sure like come on <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> like, a it, pretty standard yeah uh, and it's written well though. Like the, the there's a whole dialogue with like if that was just a short story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't read it because I hate short stories. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, the whole section where 
uh, you can kind of tell, you know exactly what's going on in both of their lives just based on how they're talking to people in the story. Like, that's well done. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, can't, like, I, I, I get the feeling that this guy's a schmuck and I get the feel they actually use the word schmuck in the song. Yeah. Uh, and I get the feeling that she's just like too nice to fucking let him down and is living her life like forgetting about. Like, I get those feelings because it's well written. The it, song sucks. <laughs> I think also like that that like weird accent John Cale is using while reading it is like annoying. I think he's annoying. I think the band. Oh, I annoying. still love him. Okay. I still love him. Uh, I do think also uh, Lady Godiva's operation. Good lyrics. Interesting lyrics. Bad song. Yeah. That's another like interesting uh, song about a uh, transgender woman who gets the botch lobotomy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's this. Uh, then you got. Heard her call my name, which is uh, unlistenable, real abrasive. Okay, thank free, you for, for yeah <laughs> confirming that. Free jazz and anything free jazz. Jesus Christ, man! It's, we've we've done so many artists inspired by Ornette Coleman that if yeah. he, if he wasn't a jazz artist, like maybe way down the road, I feel like we should do him. But yeah, yeah, if he had like a manageable discography, I'd be like, we have to do him because we've done he keeps so, coming up. Yeah, yeah, so many artists are inspired but, by the dude. Like free jazz done by people who aren't good at their instrument is it's almost like a joke it's because good free it's, jazz it's i don't ex- even like it's an ex- yeah it's an excuse to be sloppy Ugh. i always thought the album cover was just black mm-hmm. there's actually like a skull and bones tattoo flag really? thing on it i was like i never noticed that interesting all these years but um uh, here she comes down is like one of their famous ones and it's one of the ones i heard uh before this um have you ever heard of the band, uh, the Nig Heist? No. Okay, so the Nig Heist, it was like a joke spinoff band from Black Flag. It was uh, led by Mugger, which was one of Black Flag's roadies. <clears throat> okay. I don't remember who else was in the band. I think maybe maybe D- Chuck Dukowski might have been in there. Uh, joke band, they were it was overly sexual, overly, overly ridiculous. They wore like wigs. <laughs> so pretend- this is the Velvet Underground. <laughs> I'll get, hold on. Yeah, I'm get, I'm, I'll get, it sounds stupid now, but I'll get, I'll get to a point. Uh, they purposely antagonized audiences they would always fight just they were just trolls they were trolls sure. essentially and very funny and they have actually one album it's called the nick heist and the name the nick heist already is a hilarious story it's because uh the guy mugger uh he, he had a friend who was a black guy and he, uh whenever he would uh he would like pull out a cigarette the black guy he would grab one of the cigarettes and say nigga heist. This sounds familiar. It's actually, yeah. So they named the band, the nigga heist and I might've, they're, they're, I might've they're very yeah. funny, very Could, funny, stupid band. And then you can't say it's a good album, but it's produced really well. And it's not that bad. It's not sure. on the album. They cover here. She comes now and it's fucking way better than this <laughs> original version. It sounds good. The scene is as bad. Like this is fucking Lou Reed is not a good singer. Wait, is that Lou Reed singing on this one? Uh, yeah, I think, I think so. Who's notoriously not a good singer. Uh, this guy. No, he's this kind of talking. He talks like, yeah. he's, yeah. like a, he's like a, like if Bob Dylan was only speaking instead of <laughs> trying to sing like he tends to do. Uh, I love that version. It sounds good and it's stupid. And this version, it's just boring and pretty like everything else they do. Boring and pretty. I don't think this, I don't think there's anything pretty about this album. Uh, well, what I, what I think of when I think of the Velvet Underground, is a lot of the first album, which is boring and pretty as fuck. More boring as fuck than pretty as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I would say. Well, I think uh, I think we're going to venture into uh, more more boring. All right. Yeah, and if you <laughs> say so. And uh, even though you haven't dropped your best album yet. have not. So. so this, yeah, this is my personal least favorite. And this is, I wanted to give this worst because... I can't listen. Like I, I popped this in three times to just to make sure like, what mm-hmm. do I hate about this so much? I thought, Oh, it's just all the songs that I hate. I mean, it's just the whole thing. See, this was one of those albums I thought I liked. And then while doing it for the show, I was like, uh, it's not that great. No, it's good, but no. it's not that great. I, I would say it's damn near unlistenable from getting end. C plus for me. <laughs> That's, not good. <laughs> that's, like, that's by most standards. That's still pretty bad. Whatever. Let's move on. It's uh, you know, it's passable. <laughs> Let's go on to next one. Next year, nineteen sixty nine. This is self titled "The Velvet Underground." Uh, you're you're already uh, digging into this one pretty hard. This is my best and personal okay. favorite. Uh, 
it is the only one that I kind of enjoyed. And I do mean kind of because half my notes that I'm looking at right now is all negative shit. <laughs> yeah, all the abrasive noisiness is gone. I mean, the dicking around when you don't know how to play the instrument. All stripped away. This is a sure real is. quiet, nice album. And uh, I do mean it is nice. There is it something is nice. comforting about this album that uh-huh. stops it from being full-blown boring for me. Um. I remember talking to someone in high school who I didn't think was like a weird person. And then they told me they one of their favorite songs was uh, Velvet Underground's After Hours. I was like, oh, you're a crazy person. And then I listened to After Hours. I was like, nah, you're basic bitch. So so if your favorite song like Uh like on Beefheart, how I like all those the boring. Oh, the safe is milk. The first album. Yeah, I yeah. like the safe beef. That's yeah, yeah. That's this album. So I actually dig After Hours. I think but, but I think it's a good song. It's a good song. Here's the thing, on I I, I noted all of this, all my feelings toward it. I like it. I don't know why. It's not even a good. I don't think it's a good song. It's just it sounds like so many of their other stuff, just really mellow, really coffee shop fucking music. Yeah. yeah. It just works for me. Just let, somehow. The, let, let me put it this way. Yeah. It's like, if you like after hours, you don't like velvet underground. That's what I was very nice. Yeah. Very that's well what put. I was trying to get at. Um, yeah. I think, uh, I, I like Mo's voice. It's nice. That was Mo singing. Yeah. It's not bad. Um, She's better at singing than drumming. That's for goddamn sure. I really, really like murder mystery. Yeah. Uh, because now you have like the controlled chaos with some cleaner production and it's interesting mm-hmm. in contrast to the other two songs. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I do like that song. Uh, I think it's, that might be right under uh, Venus and Fur is my favorite Velvet Underground song. Um, it's super long, but I still like it. Who's the girl singing on that one? That's Mo. That's Mo. Okay, yeah, she sucks on that one. They're all, all four, four, five. I don't know how many, but a photo behind us. I don't know who the fuck anybody is. Well, oh, Mo is the one that looks like a boy. Yeah. Okay. And, and Nico's not in the band. Okay. So uh, these aren't the best photos of the full band. If it's for video watchers, there's like a slideshow behind us. Um. But yeah. So all the members sing on Murder Mystery. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I really like. Um, also, I like the guitar solo on what goes on. I don't remember. You have to pop that video. Yep. I'm gonna have to throw that on. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about it briefly, um, about some of the, the deeper, deeper cuts. That one, it's a, that just jogged my memory that there's all kinds of vocal harmonies all over this album. Like that's, that's pretty new. Yeah. Um, They're not, they're not bad and they don't even, they don't make nor break the album for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're just an interesting addition. Everything sounds better. Production is obviously much better. Musicianship doesn't sound like they're fucking children just picking up instruments for the first time. Mm-hmm. Sounds fine. Everything sounds fine. I would say they graduated for me from rage inducingly bad to just average. They're now an average, average band to me. Yeah. Uh, an average in, in this discography for me is uh, the best album. Because <laughs> fuck, man. I don't hate mellow music. I like Simon and Garfunkel. You sure. This sure. Is, the songwriting is not there. No, it's I, bland and there's... Ugh. Well, personally, I'd rather listen to this than Gart. Simon, I don't know. There's something more like comforting and it's raw. It's less uh, creepy and uh, yeah, yeah. awkward. Simon Garfunk is, is kind of awkward to me. Um, but in terms of actual construction of music, this is anybody can do this shit, uh, especially from this era. It just sounds like a lot of other, I mean, it doesn't sound specifically like this band or this band. It's just. Yeah, it's made, it's made around this time period. It's not breaking any... It's not weird. Someone, Nothing about it's weird. So, no, no. All the weirdness is gone. Even when it was weird, it wasn't like innovative weird. It was just dicking around. It's something like... I think the first one is is like innovative, weird. The second one is this harsh. So, yeah. Well, you know how I feel about both of those. Yeah, but yeah. Obviously. This, this we've been one, listening to you yeah, talk I, about them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I did like more songs on here. The songs toward the end, you know, Murder Mystery, After Hours, it, they really helped inspire some some tingly nice feelings. For and which once. Is, for, not only for <laughs> once, but it was really helpful that it was at the end of the album. Okay. Because it made it like, okay, it didn't leave a sour taste in my mouth. I'm okay with this. Uh, like I said, it's still mellow and boring and it's 
but then that's just what the band is. So I can't use that as a as a, a bullet to to shit on them with because bullets shit on people apparently. Um, it it's just the actual talent that I feel is lacking. Yeah. So uh, before we move on, uh, I did some some extra credit homework for you guys. Mm-hmm. So between this album load, they recorded a number of songs for MGM, but MGM was taken over by a new, uh, new owner. And there's some debate over whether the velvet underground got dropped because they weren't making any money or if, cause they sang about drugs and sex, but regardless uh they recorded a few tracks that mgm kind of like held hostage and didn't see the light of day until after uh there Mm -hmm. are there are a few john kale tracks on these albums if you want to check them out uh vu from 1985 has stephanie says and i'm sticking with you um people those are like fan favorites um I don't really like them without Kale. Uh, there are some interesting songs like Foggy Notion, Temptation Inside Your Heart. The other album, Another View, released in 1986. Um, s- some more like traditional like rock and roll on there. So Mike would hate it sure a would. lot. Aside from all the other reasons I'd hate it because it's this bad for one. Yeah, but I do like the John Kale tracks, Mr. Rain. They have version one and two. I think version two stronger. And there's a very heavy instrumental. I guess I'll, I'll throw it on real go ahead. real quick because uh, I think it is a interesting in, uh, instrumental. I enjoy it a lot. And uh, here we go. Yeah, and then the other thing we're mentioning is their live album 1969 uh which wasn't released until 74 but it had tracks you couldn't get anywhere else at the time like uh over you we're gonna have a real good time sweet uh bonnie brown and two tracks that were released is lou reed solo tracks lisa says and the ocean which is on vu but that wasn't released until later Mm. um and then they they reworked some VU uh, Velvet Underground songs. Uh, it's real lo-fi, so it works in their favor. Uh, the version of what goes on on this live album is fucking amazing. Okay, and, amazing to you is probably yeah, lukewarm yeah. to me. So what, what does is, that mean? To me, it, this like blows. I mean, it's like it's like a jam song, so you're going to hate it. <laughs> but like it just blows it out of out of the water the studio version um i'll like put it on and fast forward it a little bit okay i'm throwing i'm throwing that version on our on our playlist for sure so our our listeners can check it out like the organ it helps definitely fucking helps but it's still i still feel the same way about the actual songwriting sure it's it's the writing overall that the reason why i hate this band is because uh they all of their things that appeal is their image, is their their place and time, is their lyrical content, is their the quote unquote rawness. I like songwriting. I like constructed music. I like mm-hmm. talent that goes into something that something that I'm not expecting, something interesting. And uh, not once disbanded. It, I mean, maybe with like actually the murder mystery, maybe yeah, that one, and that's it. It depends on the artist. Like, like it works for me with when they have john kale uh it works for me with like the white stripes and even though jack white is very very musically inclined but Mm. it's the their earlier stuff is more like raw driven i'm excited to do them at some point because i don't have a lot of hope that i'm gonna like them and i've never listened to them that'll be another interesting episode i don't know when we'll get to it but we will get to it and then in the future when someone's going back in the archives we will have gotten to it exactly they can go back and listen and go back and listen yeah. to that one. Uh, we'll, like, yeah. re- we'll make reference to it and we're just in a weird yeah time travel podcast we, we already do these <laughs> like a month in advance so right now uh what's the date this is coming out this is episode 17 Ta- Pre- time's what? a flat circle man that is a true detective <laughs> reference and i appreciate it I, I think all of our listeners would too hopefully you should watch true detective guys it's, it's a good show still need to watch season three it's real good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm good. fucking up. That Mahershala. Ooh, 
Ooh, Ooh Mahershala. That guy's Can't wait for great. that. Can't wait for that blade. Movie. Hell yeah. Yeah. And that's the highlight of the episode. It's us t- derailing, talking about Mahershala Ali. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Velvet Underground 69. That's my favorite current. Uh, is what I think is the best. Um, whatever. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel too strongly about that though. Sure. But yeah, I just wanted to get those, uh, three releases out right. of the way because, uh, they, you know, like I said, these, uh, I believe it's like referred to as the lost album. So, uh, yeah, if you like them, those are worth checking out those yeah. three releases. All right. What do we got next? Next up, we got 1970 loaded. Very s- and even though it's seventies, um, yeah, it's it's still very much in no sixties yeah, yeah, vein. Uh, I like that opening song. What is it? Who loves the sun? Yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, other than that, why does this album exist? Uh, I don't know. Um, it's basically um, shit. I forget the other guy's name. He wasn't oh Sterling Morris. He was oh like, Morrison Sterling Morris. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, not Morris. Morris Day in the time. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like going to school, so he's not really on this album. It's basically Doug Yule and Lou Reed. Yeah. Um, there's some debate about Sweet Jane over the if the record label messed with it or mm. if Lou Reed messed with it, but whatever. Who gives a shit? That's what I would say. <laughs> that song is not doing it for me either way. At this point, there's a thousand different versions of the song. It doesn't matter. You could seek out the uh-huh. the you know, as Lou Reed intended or uh, as the rec- the man intended oh, the man. or whatever. Uh, oh, the Peel Slowly and see the box set has the, the you know, original mm. versions. But yeah, uh, Mo was pregnant, so she got credit. Does but- she actually play it on the album? No, she doesn't. Yeah, I could, well, I'm glad. For one, uh, I, it was weird for me hearing this band with good drumming. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, um, yeah. How you felt about how like it's this music, it's safe, it's born. That's kind of how I feel about this. Okay, uh, once again, completely average, and that's it's I, it almost a compliment. See, last time for the last album, it was a compliment because I didn't hate it, but this one, the, not a, not one thing stood out positively or negatively, except for uh, fucking uh, oh sweet nothing, which is fucking a Leonard Skinner song essentially. Oh, is it? No, it's not. No, oh, not, okay. it just You're sounds the like one. in style. Yeah, okay. and it's it's just as long as one. Okay, it's, it's boring. Uh, I don't like. I actually do hate Lonesome Cowboy Bill. I think that song blows. But aside from that, nothing that brought about feelings of a uh, disdain. Kind of like the, the first well, couple all albums. these all these song the the title loaded is because it's supposed to be sorry uh, loaded with hits. So <laughs> it really really this how'd is, that work out this is their uh their project merch this is their project for anyone who doesn't get that it is a minuteman reference from episode 16 please listen to that one i really like that one merch uh being commercial commercial so, so uh yeah. yeah so it's supposed to be loaded with hits uh yeah <laughs> they never they never like got famous while they were in their their prime yeah if you're a fan but uh yeah so it's, it's not it's not bad no it's, it's not just, bad but okay uh this just remind, reminded me of that scene in train spotting where uh sick boy is 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 shooting uh dog testicles with a bb gun with uh with a just fuck the main guy's name you mcgregor uh rent 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 uh mm-hmm. shit i don't know i, I feel think. like i should know that i'm, but, gonna, uh, I'm gonna google it but during that scene they actually uh they're talking about um they mentioned Velvet Underground and Lou Reed, like the sick boy. Of course he, they do, because yeah, they're like, heroin so, junkies. Yeah, exactly. He's like, oh, for some, you, first you'll have it, then you'll lose it. And then Lou Reed, Alice Paisley. And <laughs> uh, he's, and then uh, Hugh McGregor is like, oh, Lou Reed, some of his soul stuff's no bad. And then <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's no bad, but in your heart, well, it's no bad. It's just oh, shite. shite. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I feel about all of it, really. It's We're, all shite. It's all, I mean, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that, but uh, Renton. Yeah, that, that, We're, that we're talking about movies a lot on this one. Have you seen Train Spotting 2? I haven't. Oh, man. I did not have high. It's so fucking, it has no business being good. Really? It's so it, dude, fucking good. Train Spotting is one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, man. And I was afr- I'm afraid to watch the second one because of that. Oh, I'm going to let you borrow it. Oh, You're gonna love I'm excited. It. Yeah. I'm excited. I fucking, dude, I memorize, as you can hear, whole scenes in the accent. Dude. Like when 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 fucking Spud is talking about how he hasn't had he hasn't had say my balls like fucking watermelons. 
I love. Uh, I, I love. <laughs> Bi- I'm such an idiot. I love Bigsby uh, getting drunk and uh, uh, throwing oh, the glass off the second. Oh, you mean uh, um, no. What's his fucking name? I thought his name was Bigsby. Might be actually. It's like, all right, you fucking cunts. Oh, you. F- Everything he's. Everything he says is real abrasive. Uh, <laughs> so wait, I, have to, I'm, I have to look at this. Is going to be titled Velvet Underground slash. Beg- train- it's Begby. 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 There we yeah. go. Uh, so good. So good. Yeah. I, uh, I had to watch because I've seen the movie countless times, but I also had to for several times use subtitles because it's thick. There's thick specifically action. with Begby. Yeah. Which is uh, Robert Carlyle. He's fucking awesome. Everyone's great in that movie. It's a. You know what? I feel like that movie is just as relevant as this band for this episode. No, yeah, it's the heroin themed episode. Yeah. So yeah, of course we're going to talk about train spotting. Fucking wonderful movie. Do you think we weren't? Yeah, damn right. Uh, so yeah, this album sucks. What else? Is there? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't it's just bland and boring. It's not awful. It's the to me, it's the weakest uh, Lou Reed era. Yeah, or, or true Velvet Underground. I thought it was. I think this one will probably go down as the most forgettable. Hey, well, it's not because people love Sweet Jane. For me. Oh, for you. For okay. me. We're talking about me here. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Sorry. All right. What about for you? Is this not the most forgettable for you? No. I mean, if if it ended here like it should have, yes. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I guess let's move on. Last album. Here we are. It's been a long journey. It's been rough. It's been a, uh, you know, fist fists were thrown. Uh, accents were used, and now we are mm-hmm. at 1973. Mm-hmm. Mahershala Ali's were talked about. 1973 squeeze. Well, I'm going to read you the first three lines of my notes. Okay? okay. Okay. First line one: The Who already wrote this opening track. Yeah, they did. Okay. The second line. The Beatles already wrote this second track. <laughs> third third line, the Beach Boys already wrote this third track. This fucking album is just mimicking everyone they possibly could. It's the the worst album. Um, yeah, it's worse. Yeah, I I didn't. So this is really like a like hated album. One of the most like hated albums in the history of music. Um, and I was trying not to be that guy. I was trying to look at this as just a Doug Yule, like solo Doug Yule album, uh-huh. because no one. That's what it is, right? Yeah, because like Lou Reed's not here. Sterling's not here. Moe's not here. For some reason, in Pace of Deep Purple plays the drums. What the fuck? <laughs> so, well, it explains why the drums are really good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was just trying to look at it as like a Doug Yule album to not like keep adding onto the pile, but it's just, man, it's boring. It's real fucking boring. Yeah. It's, it's real. Okay. As a, as a man who hates the Velvet Underground, uh, first listen. Yeah. This is boring. This is all, this is generic. Been done a million times. It definitely sucks. But I hate it less than White the Lego. actual <laughs> Velvet Underground. Like the Velvet Underground is a band that I don't enjoy. I enjoy so little <laughs> that this is like, yeah, at least it's not them. But but I went when I went back for my second listen, which I didn't want to fucking do. I had like I was so bored that I had to really swallow my pride and say, you know what, this is the worst album because if you happen to like any any inkling. Of the Velvet Underground and what is considered the Velvet Underground, this thing is the such such polar opposite of that. There's there's nothing, there's not not a shred. Nothing. There's nothing here. And even if you hate the Velvet Underground, like I do, even still it sucks. Even still, like with, I the, said, with the even, good production, well, except for the the drums are kind of wimpy sounding. Even with the better production, the better musicianship, uh, overall less annoying. Like I, I'm not imagining a bunch of fucking beatniks in a circle playing this. Yeah, I appreciate all those things. Even still, it blows. Yeah, like I said, even if it was called like Doug Yule Squeeze, yeah, it's not. It's still not good. Um, yeah, I wonder what the thought process was. Like, was it like, well, no one really knows who they are, but they kind of do. So we're just going to like keep the name and hope no one notices. Yeah. What was, yeah, I'm confused it, with the rest. Yeah, it's real interesting. I couldn't really like find an official reason for why mm-hmm. they felt the need to keep doing that. But, uh, or like who was even interested at that point. So 
and real interesting album in the sense that there's like what gives you the right to call yourself the Velvet Underground? I wouldn't say call it a fucking title you'd want to have anyway. <laughs> but uh, man, it, it's there's again nothing that that really made me mad in terms of this is so bad I fucking don't want to hear this. But nothing good, nothing good. And, and actually, the only thing that was pretty okay is the outro to Louise, but. For for one, it's just ripping off the Beatles, that mm-hmm. entire outro. The, the one thing I liked, they already ripped off. Sure. And then also the song, the rest of the song is hokey and bad and long. Mm-hmm. So there is oh, that was grasping at straws, finding a thing to like on this album. It's just so fucking bland. It sounds like music that would be in the background of a fucking car insurance commercial. Like it's Yeah. It's it's real bad. I was dragging my feet on it and both times I fell <laughs> fell asleep listening. <laughs> really? Dude, that's I shouldn't be so appropriate. Yeah, now I know when I can't go to bed, I'm gonna throw on this piece of fucking hot <laughs> steamy garbage. Do, I don't know. There's does any other defenders because there's a because albums like this always fascinate me. Kind of like I uh, think there are defenders of this album. So is some asshole defender. <laughs> the thing is, it, albums like oh, this. The, the band Squeeze. Huh? There's a band called Squeeze named after this album. Yeah. Do they suck as much? Probably. Okay. Uh, but albums like this always fascinate me, kind of like uh, Credence's Mardi Gras, where you hear- I, it thought, like, I thought of Mardi Gras. Yeah. It's something so, so off the path, so left field, like, why is this in here? Why is- Who, who threw- Yeah. Who threw this fucking- I don't know, pineapple in my pizza? Is that a good... <laughs> yeah. a bad, it's a bad analogy. I don't care. For, is it, pi- it works for me because yeah. I don't like pineapple yeah. one. Who put this turd in my room? That, sure. Something like that. Like, w- w- Not that I thought the room wasn't already full of turd because the Velvet Underground sucks to me, but still, it's so... It's Why does this exist? How is this here? Uh, and who enjoy, Who fucking likes this? Some people do. I also think it's on the list of like criminally like over... Like... Like people hate the album for no, it's some sort of list like that. Oh, where it's just, yeah, it's just a bashed albums that than, people hate for no reason, something like that. I would say there's, there's, okay, hating this, I, I don't get. Uh, unless you're like, you know, I, I suppose it's, it's the, the crowd that really loves Velvet Underground and what they stand for mm-hmm. and the members. Uh, musically, it just doesn't need, like, the, if it doesn't this need album, to exist. If this disappeared in all remnants of it, <laughs> no one would notice. Not even the family of fucking <laughs> Doug Ewell or whatever the hell his name is. Uh, no one would know. No, no. one would notice. No. This it means nothing. This album means nothing. And I feel worse having listened to it two times. Two times listen to this fucking garbage. Two times? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm all uh, worked up. Yeah. Not as worked up as I thought you were. Like, you hate it. No doubt. No doubt. But, you know. I thought you were going to go off the rails like I did. No, no, I'm not going off. The- Listen, <laughs> I've, I'm a I'm matured young man. Okay. In my youth, I probably would have thrown something probably at that TV because there's a bunch of pictures of these people who I don't fucking like. I don't know. There's this band, man, the, the how overrated they are. It's not that people revere them. It's that they're so revered and I don't get any of it. Like I desperately try to put myself in the position of someone who's susceptible uh, so that's probably a bad word. <laughs> yeah, susceptible to the guiles of the velvet under. But like, <laughs> no, but w- w- I'm thinking about my my most angsty of ages, where I needed to, uh, a scene in a band to bond with something that was really edgy, that really spoke to the fucking whatever shit I was going through, and it's still annoying. These are, this is this is still an annoying band. <laughs> I fucking don't like. Oh, I think as a as a teenager, this was like about as noisy. As I would get like beef heart was too much. This was like, um, I, I guess that's just where you and I differ. Cause I was a big beef heart head yeah. and people will say way worse things about the beef heart that I listened to. than I'm saying about the Velvet sure. Underground. Yeah. Cause I'm desperately I trying to did. understand. You probably, yeah. <laughs> you know what? We're all just people with opinions, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, like, uh, like I said, uh, you know, uh, Lou Reed's babbling incoherent nonsense is not better than uh, yeah. Beef Heart. Beef, yeah, it's all babbling incoherent nonsense. Yeah, it's the end of the day. However, Beef Heart is actually a good singer, though. 
I'll give him. He can actually. B4 can only sing, <laughs> I would say. And even then, if you heard him sing, you would say, no, he can't. But then he he's he's a good singer. He's a good singer. He just has a very crazy voice. Lou, voice yeah. Lou Reed can't sing. Lou Reed's this kind of, hey, we're hey, hanging. Hey, my man. man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of Randy Newman, like. Uh, it's talky singing, kind of. Talky singing. Whatever. I, I guess we're going to wrap it up. Uh, this has been a, a an interesting one. Uh, I'm glad to be done. I man, <laughs> I'm worried for the for future episodes, honestly, because like I wasn't expecting to go in to, to be this annoyed through because like I ah, bet, man, I feel like you've been annoyed more than I have. Really? Because right? like body count got to you. <laughs> body count did get to me. Like, <laughs> like I don't think Simon and Garfunkel broke me, but. I think Beef Heart broke me. Uh huh. That was because I mean that was a big ass discography. Yes. This this was only five albums, so I, I feel blessed, <laughs> very fortunate to. I get it in uh uh oh quantity. Qu- yeah, yours more spread out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I guess we'll recap. Anyway, okay. Uh, man, <laughs> I, I I don't want to give. They're all the worst album to me. Moving on. <laughs> no, okay. Uh. 1969 Velvet Underground best personal favorite. Uh, I hate it the least. That is all I could say about that. <laughs> and uh, obviously the worst squeeze 1973 default worst, but white light, white heat 1968. That is my least favorite. That is what I consider uh, everything I hate about this band. Uh, nice and packaged into one album. Uh, really, really don't like this band. Alex. I have the most boring opinion. Uh, best personal favorite, Velvet Underground, Nico. Worst, least favorite, Squeeze. That's genuine. Genu- <sighs> what you'll... Nice brick in the mold, Alex. Yeah, the, nothing nothing unique about my opinion here. But still, you were needed. Yes, to balance it to, out. To, to fight counterbalance. me a little bit. Anyway, if you have any feedback on this episode, maybe you want to shit on me a little bit, I probably deserve it. Or if you want to suggest a new artist for, or maybe not new, different artist for us to talk about. As well as any not, comments, love, yeah. hate, send all that to everyalbumever at gmail.com. Please subscribe on YouTube. Now, I, I never I never plug the YouTube once. I feel like I should. Yeah, because now that we support, have it. Yeah, now that we have it. YouTube, subscribe, please, like, comment. Share. Do all the things that would really help us out. Uh, we would love you even more than we do already. Um, also, please be sure to listen to the Spotify playlist that we've created for you guys. Uh, it, there will be songs that I put on there. Maybe one, maybe maybe two. <laughs> Mostly Alex, probably. Mostly me. Also, you can check out check out all of the playlists for previous episodes, uh, songs that we picked out. Our personal favorites. Uh, you can find links on everyalbumever.com as well as you can follow Alex directly at what is it? Mother Puncher Inc. is incorporated. INC. And uh, of course, Instagram. You can follow me at Pope Jesse Ventura and Alex. Mother Puncher. Okay. Alex, you're definitely picking this closing song. Oh, most deaf, but you know, no surprise here. It'd be the same song you would have picked. So what are you what are you picking? Which, well, I'm gonna hit you with a little Venus and Furs. Venus and Furs. Thank Christ. Thank you all for listening and thank you for watching. See ya!